Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm your friend in Saxo. Mm, today, the experiment that we are going to do is to try to figure out how can we call a third party protocol. So that we could do the money transferring with other coins like the doggy coin. And over the time, sometimes you would hear a word called DeFi. What is that? It is a short for decentralized finance. It's an umbrella term for the part of the crypto universe that is geared toward building a new internet, internet native financial system using blockchains to replace traditional intermediaries and trust merchandising. Okay, let's have a comparison between the divine and traditional finance. The divine, you hold your money, while the traditional finance, your money is held by companies. And in divine, you control where your money goes and how it's spent. But in traditional finance, you have to trust the companies not to mismanage your money, like lend to risky borrowers. In finance, oh sorry, in divine, the transfers of funds happen in minutes, but in traditional finance, every the payments can take days due to the manual processes and in the, in the define transaction activity is pseudonymous it is pseudonymous which is anonymous but in traditional financial service the financial activity is tightly coupled with your identity so you can not do the transaction in an anonymous way in the traditional finance area and for the define it is open to anyone but in the traditional finance area you must apply to use financial services and for the define the more market is always open for the 24 hours, all day and all nights. But in traditional finance, the market's closed because employees need to have a sleep. And for the define, it's built on transparency. Anyone can look at a product's data and expect how the system works. But in traditional finance, you cannot see those details under the or behind the service you are using. So it seems like the define is the future somehow. Decentralized finance, okay. Alright, so now we know the definition of define. What else we could do? I want to search for some resources for learning. So, define. Learning tutorial. GitHub. Well, this seems to be good. And it gets so many different things. Let me just um, try to open it and say how much we know and how much we don't know. For the basics, it got the HTTP, HTTPS, RTC protocol. We already know that. And the Git, the version control. We also know that. For the smart contracts, it's containing the compiling, testing, and developing smart contracts. We know that. But we don't know the life circle of smart contracts. According to this picture, it says that it contains four races, the create, race, execute, and finalize. I have no idea about that. But if we look at this picture, creation, negotiation of multiple parties, design, implementation, and validation of smart contracts. This is the design part, where the programmer or software engineer has to write the code. And for the development, it means we have to put the contracts to the blockchain. And then the execution, evaluation on contracts, auto-execute contract statements once it, it is triggered. And then after the execution, the data needs to be get updated, which means the whole chain will update according to the execution. So those are just some abstract concepts. It doesn't really help for us to make a real product. Either in high-level languages, it probably means the solidity. I don't know. What is distributed later? What is that? Ledger. Ledger. A distributed ledger is a consensus. Consensus of replicated, shared, and synchronized digital data geographical spread across multiple sets, countries, or institutions. Unlike with a decentralized database, there is no central administrator. Distributed ledger. Distributed ledger. Okay, here's the case. For example, if you have a database before, you only have a single one, but after you have in implement this technology, which is a distributed layer. Then the, deba the database you have for now becomes multiple nodes and they have to do some synchronize to make sure each one of the nodes has the same data stored inside of it so that no one could cheat and anyone have a common sense of how much money you have in your account. That's my understanding. That's probably right. And what is the Bitcoin WPT? What is that? Oh, it means the Bitcoin white paper. Eh, but what is white paper? 
A right paper is a report or guide that informs readers about a complex issue and presents the issue in body's philosophy on the matter. It is meant to help readers understand an issue, so solve a problem or make a decision. So for this case, I think it's probably about what problem we have for now and how can we do to solve the problem. That's why we have created this project, for example, the Bitcoin. That's my understanding. Elliptic curve cryptography. An elliptic curve cryptography. Well, that's a hard word, but I think this is the base theory behind of the crypto world. Let me do a search for that. Elliptic curve cryptography. An elliptic curve cryptography is an approach to public key cryptography based on the algebraic structure of elliptic, elliptic curves over finite fields. ECC allows smaller keys compared to non EC cryptography to provide equivalent security. So this is just a mathematic method for encrypt something, right? This is common, for example, in the SHA 256. This is also an algorithm. And then let's go to the ether ring. I think this is how they read it, but I'm not really sure about that. Ethereum. Ethereum. Oh, right. Ethereum. 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 So for the Ethereum, it has a lot of standards. Why? Why we have to have standards? Because for any functionality, there could eventually have multiple solutions. But if we want to let th those people have a, let's say, common knowledge or have a standard, they could do the cooperation in a more efficient way if they have standard because they understand each other so that's why here we got some standard so what is the ERC20 one of the most significant Ethereum tokens is known as ERC20 ERC20 has emerged as the technique standard it is used for all smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain for token implementation and provides a list of rules that all Ethereum based tokens must follow ERC20 is similar in some respects to Bitcoin Litecoin and any other cryptocurrency. ERC20 tokens are blockchain based asserts that have value and can be sent and received. The primary difference is that instead of running on their own blockchain, ERC20 tokens are issued on the Ethereum network. So it's a standard. In other words, it's a common list of rules. Some of these rules include how the tokens can be transferred, how transactions are approved, how users can access data about a token and the total supply of tokens. ERC20 specified six different coding functions. ERC20 defines six different implementation coding functions for the benefit of other tokens with the Ethereum system. In terms of implementation coding for ERC20 tokens, the six basic coding functions are 1. The total supply 2. The balance of 3. The allowance 4. Transfer 5. Approve 6. Transfer from Alright, the total supply means how many how many coins the protocol can provide and the binance of it probably means by using this function you could get uh, the money you have in your accounts and the allowance I'm not pretty sure about this let me just do a search Oh, the allowance function returns the token amount remaining, which is the which the spender is currently allowed to withdraw from the owner's account. So it's uh, the money that you can operate for now. And for the transfer function, we all know it is how or it is what you can use to transfer your money to other accounts, to other people's accounts. And for the approve function, what it does. I know it's made for approvement, but what exactly it does. Okay, for the approve function, it is used by an address to approve the spending of a particular amount of tokens. So which means if you had to spend your money, you had to approve for it. So this is a function you have to use if you want to spend your money. Okay, now we have a basic understanding of ERC20. How about ERC421? What is that? 721. What is that? ERC721. It is a non fungible token. Fungible. Fungible. Non fungible token. So, what is a non fungible token? A non fungible token or NFT. Oh, if you are talking about an NFT, then I would understand what you are talking about. It probably means some picture or videos that you could buy on the internet. The non fungible token is used to identify identify something or someone in a unique way. This type of token is perfect to be used on platforms that offer collectible 
multiple items, access keys, notary tickets, numbered sets for concerts and sports matches. So this specified, sorry, this specified type of token has amazing possibilities. So it deserves a proper standard, which is the ERC721. Well, you may think that the standard for the for the crypto world is very hard to understand, but in the real world, it's not. It just defines some common functions that it should have. For example, here, the Binance of the owner of save transfer from, save transfer from, approve, set approve for all, get approved, it's approved for all. And then it defines three events, transfer, approve, approve for all. That's all. That's a standard. It's not that hard to understand. And so far, we know that the ERC-20, it's a standard for some common coins, for example, the doggy, the BTF, sorry, the BTC, and for the ERC-721, it means some NFT protocol. And then what is the ERC-1155? What is that? It means mute token standard. This is a standard interface for contracts that manage multiple token types. A single deployed contract may include any combination of fragile tokens, non fragile tokens, or other configurations. What it means by multi token standard? The idea is simple and sex to create a smart contract interface that can represent and control any number of fragile and non fragile token types. In this way, the ERC a 1155 token can do the same functions as an ERC20 and ERC721 token, and even both at the same time. And based of all, improving the functionality of those standards, making it more efficient, and correcting obvious implementation errors on the ERC20 and ERC721 standards. That is good. Probably this is what I was looking for, because I just want to create a protocol that could control other protocol. So ERC1155 functions and features are batch transfer, transfer multiple asserts in a single call, batch balance, get the balances of multiple asserts in a single call, batch approve, approve all tokens to an address, hoax, receive token hoax, NFT support, if supply is only one, treat it as NFT, save transfer rules, set up rules for secure transfer. Okay, now we have the bunch balance and the bunch transfers, will it save gas free for us or not. I think it will, otherwise why they make such a function? Well, it can indeed save the gas free, but not that obvious, but at least it saves that. And for the Ethereum virtual machines, let me do a search, even though I just want to tell you what it is for now, but I'm still gonna do a search. Ethereum virtual machine, EVM, is a computation engine which acts like a decentralized computer that has millions of executable projects. That, that makes sense. Okay, so this is a software platform that developers could use to create a decentralized application, and that virtual machine is where all Ethereum accounts and smart contracts live. The downsides of the Ethereum virtual machine, the UAM network isn't entirely decentralized. The vast majority of Ethereum nodes are hosted on centralized closed servers like Amazon Web Services. If the owner of such services decide they don't like Ethereum for some reason, the nodes could easily be shut down, damaging or destroying the network. Okay, you can think it as a service, but for the service, it will not only run one single application or one single protocol or yeah something like that but instead it runs a bunch of protocol or contracts as they would say and for the Ethereum networks it has a main net and test night. normally we will use the test night for developments Ethereum transaction with using wallets this is simple anyone can do this interacting with deployed smart contracts well I think this can be done in any programming language but um, by using the JavaScript is the uh, simple Way. Okay, now we basically finished this, the step one, the basics. Now, how about we go to the step two, the general. For the build tools, for the package managers, we'll simply use Yong and NPM. That's something that we already know very well. And then we will use the Sonata team because that's something that we already know. For the IDEs, 
there has an IDE called Remax IDE. What is that? Well, it's just a web application where you could modify your protocol code or let's say contract code. And then you probably could compile it and um, deploy it. That's my thinking. Yes, you could do that. Well, for some reason, if you knew the sonnet key, then for some simple de de decentralized applications, then you do not have to know any back-end programming language, for example, the Java or something like that. Then for the frameworks, we basically will use a hard hat because that's the thing that we know. What is the infra? What is that? The world's most powerful blockchain development should. By using this framework, you can focus on building and scaling the next generation software. Well, the problem is here, you get the price section, which means it's not free. So we will not use it. And for the distributed storage, yeah, normally people will use IPFS. I tried to understand the IPFS before, but um, I gave up. But that's fine. If we want to use it, we don't have to understand it. Then comes from, uh, we are in the step three, which is keep on. For the front end part, we can use the React or the Vue.js. I can do both. So that's not a problem for me. For the security part, what is the checklist testing? What is that? Um, the checklist means some points that you have to do a check to make sure that your products won't get hacked. Well, the concept start to getting heavy because for the left side, there has a lot of things that I don't know. That's fine. Let's get it done one by one. So what is EIP 1559? What is that? Okay, so the EIP-1559 will change the Ethereum's free market mechanizing. For example, in before, people have to pay to get their transaction work. And the one or the people who pays the highest win the competition, their transaction get processed. But in this standard, EIP standard, the transfer fee is always fixed. But you could pay more money to let it process faster. But for those people who do not want to pay their process or the transaction will also get it done, but um, it takes longer time. DeFi implementations. What is the leading? Lending pool. Sorry, lending, lending pool. So this is the application on the contracts which you could uh, use to borrow money from others, and others probably will also charge you for the service. I mean, the money service. They give you money, and you give them more money in return. And then it's the stable coin. I know what this is. It means for every coin, it has a equ equivalent uh, currency on the real world so that they always share the same value as the real world currency. Here's a word called uh, fiat money, fiat money, which means the real world money or real world currency. And what is the forming? Forming is process of using decentralized finance to maximize the returns. Users lend, lend or borrow capital on a DeFi platform and earn the cryptocurrency in return for their services. So what do they service? They provide money. It's the same thing, I guess, like the lending here. You know what? For this, for those applications, they have already exist in our society for a long time. But for this time, what they did is to use the crypto technology to construct those services again. And then we come to the chain section. What is the DX? What is that? Decentralized exchange. It means decentralized exchange or DX. We all know exchange, which is a place where you could buy or sell stocks. But the decentralized exchange, it is used to help you make exchange for those crypto coins. And what is side chains? What is that? A sidechain is a separate blockchain network that connects to another blockchain called a parent blockchain or mainnet. A sidechain is a separate blockchain which runs in parallel to Ethereum mainnet and operates independently. It has its own consensus algorithm. Consensus. It is connected to the mainnet by a two-way bridge. So why do they do that? Because they want to use the Ethereum mainnet while also they want to create their own network so that's why they do it or sometimes they simply want to or they simply wanted to connect to chain so they use this kind of technique to connect them and what is e m e way what is that 
which stands for the maximum extractable value, is the term given to when value is extracted through the reordering and the censoring of blocks, typically those in civilizing the miners or validators are arbitrager. Arbitrager traders play pain manner with high face. Uh, you know what? I don't understand that. Okay. MEWA is the amount of money a manner could earn on the other ring. So there has a lot of manner on the blockchain. Why? Because they had to be a validator for those data to make sure that uh, the data on the chain is correct. But they cannot do it for free. So the blockchain has to pay them. The amount of money the a manner got from the blockchain is called the MEWA. And for the chain, it has a lot of different chains. For example, the BSA, the Polygon, the Solana. Behind of those chains are different companies. We are almost done, so let's just have patience here. L1, L2 solutions, what is that? A1 chains include Ethereum, Solana, and Terra. Layer 2 is a, sky, is a scaling solution for the main blockchain. In the Ethereum ecosystem, L2 solutions include roll-ups that perform transactions off-chain before adding them to the main chain. Well, you can think of it like this. For example, the Layer 1, which is a, is a base service or those nodes that's on the ground, while the Layer 2 is a higher layer. It controls those Layer 1 node, for example, the Ethereum, Solana, and the Terra, so that uh, they could do the money transfer between different uh, public chains. And there has different solutions for real apps, for example, the, the ZK core apps or the optimized core apps. There are just some algorithms that you could use to do that kind of job. And also, I think for the state, state channels and the, this one, Plasma, there are also some algorithms for doing that kind of job. And what is research-based check? What is that? Well, it probably means that you have to know how to do the research in the crypto area. That's it. And here we go. We just finished the whole DeFi developer roadmap. So when you go out, if someone asks you some knowledge of them, you could probably already know how to answer them. All right, this is the learning part. In the next section, we'll be focusing on how can we actually implement a contract that could do some iterations with other third-party contracts.